Hello there, uh, this is Storyteller Mitch, and I decided to do a video series where I read books to you, and I decided my first one will be this. No, it's not in Chinese. I found this at a uh, fundraiser, and the title of the book is Lady Precious Stream. Uh, it says S.L. Sung. And I got it years ago. This is a very old book. It says right here, there's a stamp. And it says, Library of Gerald C. Brown. And, oh! It was an American 20 in here. Old one. Got a little die on it and rip. This will be our bookmark. <laughs> And the person who got at it put their uh, brand on here. Uh, it's just the paper glued on, it looks like. Can't really see it, but it's a little gnome holding books. It's cute. And it says Sydney Kabrinsky. That's who it belonged to before. All right. Lady Precious Stream, an old Chinese play done into English according to its traditional style by S.I. Sung, with preface by Lascelles Abercrombie. Liverite Publishing Corp, New York, Method & Co. Limited, London, 1935. And there's also a pretty picture here. Can't see with my crack camera, but maybe I'll scan and I'll put them to my side or something. All right, I am not going to read the introduction. I'm going to go straight into it. Uh, it's a play, so it, it may not read like I would be a normal book. Oh, and there's a dedication in here, too, to Professor Allardyce Nicole, to whose friendship and encouragement I owe so much. That's so sweet. So I'm not going to read the preface. Uh, I'm just going to go straight into it. Okay, Act 1. Okay, I'll tell you the characters. It's my first video, bear with me here <laughs> for this type of thing. Okay, principal characters of the play in order of their appearance. His Excellen Excellency Wang Young, the Prime Minister, Madam Wang of the Chen family, his wife Su, the Dragon General, their eldest son-in-law Wei, the Tiger General, their second son-in-law Golden Stream, their eldest daughter. You can make as many jokes as you want there. I did. <laughs> Su's wife Silver Stream, their second daughter. Wei's wife Precious Stream, their third daughter. Uh, he, um, this one is it's spelled H S I E H. I'm just going to call it Say Ping, and last name is Ping Kuei, your gardener, Her Royal Highness, the Princess of the Western Regions, His Excellency, the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Okay, Act 1. Let it be clearly understood that this is an unfurnished stage represents the scene of the picturesque garden of the Prime Minister Wang Young. A pole with some branches and leaves attached and fastened to a chair is placed on the right by a man in black, and an odd-looking table is placed on the left by another in similar dress. They are the property men of the Chinese stage, and their ministrations are supposed to be unseen by the audience. So we must bear in mind that trees are represented by the pole fastened to the chair, and rocks represented by the odd-looking table have been scattered here and there, for some time by the invisible hands of nature. And further though, these two men are still standing at the back, we must consider the stage to be empty. Presently, two attendants dressed in flowery garments enter from the right and place themselves near the footprints facing each other at a distance of a few places. The Prime Minister Wang, whose weak character is revealed in this play, has to appear with a natural face without any makeup and wearing a long black beard, which indicates that he is not a villain of the piece. In spite of his very long beard, 
His excellently is only a middle-aged man who has always found life easy and happy. As he is a man of pepper temper, he is sometimes cross when he has really nothing to find fault with. He is strict master of his home, which he rules with an iron hand, though his wife says that she should have some uh, have some one at his elbow. The government he finds to rule that sorry, the government he finds that to rule a nation is much easier than to rule a family. That is no doubt why we have so many prominent statesmen in history. He is dressed in a gorgeous embroidered red gown and a black headdress and walks with stately measured steps to the middle of the stage to show that he is the master of the house. To our surprise, it is not one of the two attendants, but one of the two property men standing at the back who comes forward and places a chair with a pile of cushions on it behind the prime minister and adjusts the back of the prime minister's gown when he sits down facing the audience. As if asked to give a lecture, he begins to adjust the audience by introducing himself. I'm weird it out. I'm not used to this. <laughs> Wang says, I am your humble servant, Wang Young, the Prime Minister of the Emperor's Court. My consort's name is Chen. Although we have been happily married for 20 years, we are still childless. It is true that we have three daughters, but that doesn't count. As you know, daughters leave their parents and become other people's property. My oldest daughter is called Golden Stream, who married Su, the Dragon General. The second is called Silver Stream, who married Wei, Wei the Tiger General. The one dearest to my heart is the youngest, called Precious Stream, who will be 16 next February. I have... A mind to choose for her among the rich and young nobles for a son-in-law, but the little minx is as willful as she is pretty and refuses to obey my wishes. However, today is New Year's Day. I will spread a feast here in my garden and have all my family present and let my wife, my two sons-in-law, and my two elder daughters try to persuade her to come to reason. He calls, attendants! And there's a picture here. The attendants say, Yes, Your Excellency. Wang says, Request Madam Cook to come here. Attendants, Yes, Your Excellency. One attendant goes to the right entrance and calls loudly. His Excellency requests the presence of Madam. A voice off stage, Yes, I will come. Two maid servants precede her and move to the front of the stage. Then she appears through the right entrance in a dark blue satin frock and a red skirt and walks slowly to the middle of the stage near the footlights. Madam is a kind lady of, certain, of uncertain age to her children. She seems to be more than a hundred while her husband considers her as a mere child. She is one of the women who know the importance of the ancient female virtues. To obey your father when you're young, to obey your husband when you're married, to obey your children when you're a mother. When she finds she can't obey both her father and husband, she always chooses her husband. And recently, when she found it would be rather difficult to obey both her husband and children, she thought that her husband ought to have his turn to be neglected, because people generally don't want to be always obeyed. By obeying people all her life, she has acquired a benignant look and a soft voice. She addresses the audience first. Madam says, I am Chen, the wife of the Prime Minister Wang. As I was talking with my daughters and sons-in-law ah, sons in, in the reception room, I was told that my husband wanted me. She turns around. We respect my respects to your excellency. Wang, thanks and mine to you. Please be seated. And another seat is brought for her by the property man. Madam, sitting down, may I know what it is your wish? What is your wish in asking me to come to see you in the garden? Wang, Today is New Year's Day. I want to celebrate it in some way. It looks as if it is going to snow. I propose that we have a feast here in the garden to enjoy the snow. And during the feast, I hope you will try your best to persuade your youngest daughter to consent to marry one of the nobles whose suit I have approved. Madam, your orders will be obeyed, but I am afraid it will not be of any use. For the young minx is very obstinate. She insists on being allowed to choose for herself. 
Wang. Nonsense! It is scandalous for a young girl to choose a husband herself. Our young generation is becoming hopeless. What are the teachings of Confucius and Men Mencius coming to? Uh, Mencius coming to. He studied them and then act in defiance of them. He shows a trifle of anger. Madam, she says that not to uh, impose upon others your own suspicions is one of the important teachings of Confucius. She hopes you will not forget it. Wang, blowing his long beard in a rage. Phew, you have utterly spoiled her. For heaven's sake, do not encourage her to rebel against me. She turns aside and calls, Attendance! Yes, Your Excellency. Wang, tell General Su, General Wei, and the ladies to come see me. Attendance! Yes, Your Excellency. One of them goes to the entrance and calls aloud. His Excellency asks General Su and General Wei and his three daughters to go see him. Boy says, Yes, we are coming. Two generals in, this is in brackets, uh, two generals in fantastic makeups and embroidered armor covered with silk gowns appear. Su, the dragon general, is a famous warrior because he always wins the battle when the enemy general knows less about war than he does. Yet, he is one of the few great generals who know the truth and never boast about their wonderful merits. He knows little but enough to be aware of his own ignorance. He belongs to the type of practical soldier who acts in group and does not talk. Wei, the tiger general, is also a famous soldier because he always has the best of luck, though it would be difficult to find a worse general. He knows nothing and does less, but he talks endlessly and consequently has become famous. His face looks like nothing on earth, therefore it must belong to an angel. Hence, he is known as the most handsome man in the kingdom. They walk with a military air to the front stand side by side facing the audience. Sue, your humble servant, Sue, the Dragon General. Wei, Wei, the Tiger General, at your service. They face each other. Sue, my dear relative, Wei, you first, please. Wei says, my dear relative, Sue, after you, of course. Sue then says, then, with your permission, just a moment ago, our father-in-law, the Prime Minister, asked us to come to the garden to see him. I wonder what it is. What is the reason? Wait, so do I. Let us go up and find out, Sue says, stretching out his arm. You first. He goes up first, and they stand side by side facing His Excellency and Madam. Sue and Wei, your sons-in-law beg, beg to pay their respects to you. Wang and Madam say, Wang and Madam say, don't stand on ceremony, but please be seated. Sue and Wei, thank you. They sit on their father, sit, ha. Uh, I'm sorry. They sit at their father-in-law's side on the chairs provided for them by the property men. Two young ladies dressed in richly embroidered silk frocks with beautiful skirts come forward. Golden Stream, the eldest daughter of the Wang family, is a younger addition of her mother, kind, sedate, and silent. She seldom speaks and speaks but the truth. Every gesture and movement of her shows that she is well-educated and a good example of the female of ancient China. Silverstream, the second daughter, is her direct opposite. She is gay and talkative and capricious and quick-tempered in showing herself to be the daughter of her father rather than of her mother. With menacing gait, they move to the front and introduce themselves to the audience. Goldeness, Goldenstream, your humble maid, Goldenstream, the eldest daughter is the, of the Wang family. My husband is Sue, the Dragon General. Silver S says, The second daughter, Silver Stream, at your service. My husband is Wei, the Tiger General, and the most handsome man in the kingdom. When we were talking in the reception room, our father called us to come here. She peeps over to her shoulder, looking right and left. It seems there is going to be family council, and I believe I know the reason why. She addresses her sister, my eldest sister. Golden S, yes, my younger sister. Silver S says, do you know why father has called us to come to to come here? Golden S says, no, I don't. Silver says, talking very rapidly, rapidly because of our mix of sister. Sorry about that. Because of our minx of a sister. She stretches us three fingers. 
I am sure it is about her. She is not very young now, and she is choosing a husband for herself. No wonder. I would do the same if I were in her place, but father also choosing one for her, and no wonder. I would do the same if I were in his place, and mother, golden interrupted her. All right, don't talk too much. Too much. Let's let us go in. They go in and bow to their parents. Golden and silver, and silver say, "Your daughters have come to pay their respects to you, dear father and mother." Wang and Madam say, "Don't stand on ceremony, but be seated." Golden and silver say, "Thank you." They sit at their mother's side, and chairs are provided for them. Silver says, quick and sharp, are you calling us here to discuss the case of my youngest sister, Precious Stream? Wang says, eh, yes, no, not exactly. Today is New Year's Day. I wanted to celebrate in some way. It looks as if it is going to snow. I propose that we have a feast here in the garden to enjoy the snow, and during the feast, well, Silver, Silver says, oh, I know. And during the feast, we will try our best to persuade our younger sister to consent to marry one of the young nobles whose suit you have approved. Isn't that so? Wang says, yes, that is exactly what I wish you to do. Golden says, but if she has a suitor in her own mind, Wang says, nonsense, I won't allow it. Golden, is, this, is that fair, dear father? Madam, yes, is that fair, dear? Wang well, a, a daughter's duty is to obey. Silver, father knows everybody of consequence, and if your youngest sister's secret suitor is a desirable person, then he must be on father's list. Otherwise, it must be some unsuitable creature whom it would be well and proper to avoid. When I was young, I left my choice entirely in dear father's hands, and you see, I became a wife of the most handsome man in the kingdom. She points her finger at Wei, her husband famous for his ugliness. Wei says, oh, I thank you. He covers his face with his sleeve. Golden says sarcastically, but father can't find another man as handsome as your husband for her now. Wei, yes, that's true. Silver, not another word, please. She's coming. Precious Stream, the youngest and the most beautiful daughter of the family, appears through the right entrance with a maid. She is not so ostentatiously dressed as her sisters, and there is an air about her which suggests better taste. She walks slowly and elegantly forward, but her gait is entirely different from that artificial mincing gait of her sisters. She is more active and lively than Golden Stream, and more kind-hearted and gentle than Silver Stream. She seems to be a mixture of both her father's and mother's qualities with some additional charms of her own. She knows how to deal with people and does it charmingly. She is one who would make you put the halter willingly around your neck if she chose to lead you along with her. Precious Stream To the audience, I am your humble maid, Precious Stream, the third and youngest daughter of the Wang family. When I was going to... When I was doing my embroidery work on, in my boudoir, I heard my father calling me to come to the garden to see him. She speaks to the maid. My maid will lead you to me. Sorry, my maid will lead me to the garden. The maid says, yes, my lady. They proceed and arrive. Precious stream, your daughter's respects to you, dear father and mother. Wang and madam say, don't stand on ceremony and be seated. Precious says, many thanks, and my compliments to my brothers-in-law and my sisters. They all say, we thank you, the same to you. Precious says, sitting beside her sisters, may I know why I am called to come here, dear father? Wang says, ahem, well, the fact is, a to did it today, a today is a silver stream. Allow me, father, rapidly as if reciting a poem. Today is New Year's Day. Father wants to celebrate it in some way. It looks as if he's going to snow. Father proposes that we have a feast here in the garden to enjoy the snow. And during the feast, he wishes, Wang coughing uneasily, ahem, ahem, what that will do, thanks. Precious says, splendid. 
all the servants to arrange the table at once, and when the snow is falling, we shall have a gentleman to write poems for the occasion. I think my brothers-in-law will be glad to do so. Sue, oh, I am not a poet, Way says. Please don't spoil the amusement by giving us an examination. Silver says, Oh, please don't. Wang says, Attendance removing that big rock to the center. Sorry. <laughs> oh, please don't. Wang, Attendance remove that big rock to the center. He points to the odd-looking table on the left and let it serve as our table. Attendants say, Yes, Your Excellency. They go to the table and try with all their might to remove it. But in vain, they come back. Your Excellency, the rocks refuse to be moved. Wang says, nonsense, that's what useless creatures you are. Madam says, but my dear, it is too heavy. Wei says, cowards, if it refuses to be removed, why don't you kick it? Silver says, yes, why don't you kick it? Precious says, dear father, I do think it is too heavy for them. Why don't you ask my brothers-in-law to remove it? They are renowned all over the world. They were renowned all the world over for their strength. It would be real sport. Wei says, aside to Sue, my dear relative Sue, it seems there is trouble in the air. Will you leave the matter to me so as to avoid the trouble that seems to be brewing? Sue says, by all means. Wei to his father-in-law. As our youngest sage Confucius said, sorry, I'm messing it up now. I, guess I should probably stop soon. Way to his father-in-law, as our greatest sage, Confucius, said, To kill a little chicken, why use a big knife, which is made for killing horses? Wang says, correcting him, for killing oxen is the ancient text. Wei hurriedly, Oh yes, to kill a little chicken, why use a big knife for killing oxen? As Confucius said. So to lift this little rock is too small a feat for me. It is also beneath my dignity if there were a big rock, say ten times as large as that, or even larger, then I would do it with pleasure, and with these, I assure you. Silver Stream says, yes, I can assure you too, Precious Stream, but if a chicken must be killed and there is too small a knife at, the hand, at hand, don't you think we must use a big knife for killing oxen just to meet the case? Wei says, well, looking at his wife for help, Silver says, who can't afford any help? Sorry, Silver says, who can't offer any help? Well, Precious says, smiling, well, Sue, a more truthful and practical man, as one of the, says, as none of us can remove that rock, may I make a suggestion? All assent. You know the gardener, he's saying ping. Quay, before coming into your service, was a street acrobat. Wei says, in other words, a beggar. Silver says, yes, a beggar. Precious says, a beggar is a man of honeyed words and no deeds, while an acrobat is a man of deeds rather than of words. Sue says, continuing his suggestion, I remember having seen him perform wonderful feats of strength by lifting up huge stones. Wei says, yes, I saw him lifting up a stone many times as big as the, that one. Order him to remove it for us. Silver says, yes, order him to do it. Precious Stream says, then don't you think this rock is too small for him? Wei looks away. Wang says, attendance. Attendants say, yes, your excellency. Wang says, in order the order the gardener, he say, uh, order the gardener say, Ping Kuei, to come here at once. Attendants, yes, excellency. One attendant goes to the left entrance and calls. His excellency orders the gardener, he's saying, Ping Kuei, to come here at once. Okay, and I'm going to stop there. My i screwing up bad now. My I'm tripping over my words. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to keep on reading next time I'm able to do a video. Alright, thank you guys. Have a good one. Bye.